Welcome back to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. In today's video, we're here at Music Go Round in Bradenton, Florida, USA. This is part of our guitar shops across America. Before we get started, a massive thank you to David and Melinda, the owners of this particular shop here, for letting us do this walkthrough. Music Go Round Bradenton is one of 37 independently owned franchise shops across the US. And this is a family owned and operated business, and it's the only one in the state of Florida. If you're unfamiliar with Music Go Round, they buy, sell, and trade music equipment. This shop has a massive selection of electric guitars, acoustic guitars, bass equipment, drums, PA equipment, microphones, keyboards, just about everything. So odds are if you play an instrument, you'll be able to find one in here. Being that this series though focuses mostly on guitars, that's what we're gonna showcase in this particular video. Please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to comment below. If you wanna check out these guys, I'll link them below. And a massive thank you to Rhiannon behind the camera for all the camera wizardry throughout this series. I appreciate it so much. Let's go in and take a look. Here we are, look at all these guitars over here. This is insane. Electrics, acoustics, amps, and there's everything including lefties. So please remain calm, all left-handed players. All right, there's so many brands on this wall, just even on this lower row here. I'm too short to see a lot of the stuff on the top. Actually, we'll take a look in a moment, but we've got all kinds of brands from Nashville. We've got Squire. What else we got? Tajima. Here we have a Tajima 540, part of their TW series electric guitars. This is extremely affordable, coming in at $249, which is awesome. This is very similar to a Squire Classic Vibe 70s Strat, so we get that humbucker in the bridge, and two single coil pickups here, and a neck that is every bit as nice as the Squire, not only in terms of its finish, but also in terms of its feel. It's probably actually slightly thicker in the hand, which is something that I really like. Tajima make a couple of different series of guitars, some made in Brazil, even though it's a Japanese name, that's where they're made, that's where the guy lives, and these which are made in Asia, but yeah, great value electric guitar, and again, this is used. These don't look like they've been played, this is crazy. <laughs> PV, and Greco. There's a lot of Greco made in Japan guitars, which is something I just don't see usually on my travels in the US, so it's great to see these. The finish on this looks amazing too, and you can tell that they've gone for a bit of a different shape than your standard Stratocaster, which is great too. It's a good point of difference. So Greco have gone with a modern C-neck, which is quite thin. So if you're a fan of something like a Fender Strat that might be a current production model, and you're looking to save a few bucks, the Greco guitars are awesome. I actually play Tokai, which is another made in Japan brand, and Greco is another great guitar to find. It's just about everything here. There's Samix, there's Jackson's, Dean. There's a lot of these sort of metal guitars here as well. So if you're a metal player, come check out Music go around Bradenton. On the top up here, there's Gretsch guitars as well, which are you know, some of my favorite in recent times. They really do sound great. Got everything, we got more Dean guitars here. Framus, woo, nice. Went to that factory a few years ago, it's beautiful. All right, we got G&L. How's this for cool? This is a G&L Legacy Stratocaster or Strat type, electric guitar, I guess they call them. But anyway, this is a really beautiful guitar in immaculate condition. This is technically used, but have a look. It's still got the plastic on the pickups. g are great. I've actually owned one of their Telecasters. They're every bit as good as Fender without kind of like, I guess the name recognition, unless you've been playing a while, that's when you know about g &L. But this is a really great guitar in the hand. The neck feels beautiful. It has a really interesting, almost sort of butter color on the back of the neck here. I don't know what you call that. It's got a yellow stain, but it, it's very different to even their other guitars. So I thought we'd showcase this one. We get the humbucker in the bridge here as well. And these floating tremolo systems, these 2.1s from GNL work really well also. I think they're probably more reliable than what you'll find, you know, in a comparable Squire or Fender made in Mexico, just in terms of their reliability. But yeah, great guitars. It does have a bit of weight to it, but yeah, look at this. It's basically brand new. It's on the used wall. Pretty cool. We've got Chapman guitars here. Ibanez, PRS. Is that a Silver Sky? It is. This is the SE Silver Sky. I can't believe there's one here. Far out. It's in pink. Look out, Rhiannon. <laughs> There's plenty of Squires, Fenders, and just about everything else as well, all the way down here. And then we've got some more acoustics, including Epiphone, Harmony guitars, and many brands I'm completely unfamiliar with. So here's an unexpected surprise. This is a left-handed 1995 American T 
Telecaster. I thought this might have been a Made in Mexico one, which is pretty common as a lefty, but this is the real deal. I actually wanted one of these many years ago. It's funny, I guess, how little has changed on these guitars over the years. You know, the Fender have always made refinements on their guitars, but this goes to show you that you don't need to go buy a new guitar to get a great instrument. This is every bit as good as the current model. It really is. It's got a nice big fat neck on it as well, which they've kind of thinned out over the years. At least the most current models don't have a neck quite this clubby. So if you're a lefty looking for a great single coil Telecaster, check out this guy. This guitar caught my eye. This is from a brand called Sawtooth, which I was completely unfamiliar with until I Googled them. Basically, we get 24 frets, which is great. So it's kind of like a PRS SE Custom 24 in terms of how easy it is to get up to the end of the fretboard, but very different in other ways. It's a bit like a fusion style electric guitar, a little bit like a Strat, but more modern, although we do get those three single coil pickups. We get Canadian maple neck here, which looks really nice and it feels nice in the hand too it's not too thin sort of right in the middle again it just it's a great sort of compromise between the 50s and 60s feel and we get this beautiful piece of mahogany on the body i just had a chat to the staff here and they said that these are really well made considering their price and i totally agree interestingly enough the headstock has a really heavy tilt on it so it sort of lends itself visually to being like a rocker's guitar but uh yeah it's got the Great aesthetic on the fretboard. And overall, it's great to see one of these. There's actually two of these here. Here we have the Squire Jazzmaster. I actually reviewed one of these on the channel not too long ago. It was a different color, I'm pretty sure, but this is part of that classic vibe series. And the neck on this, again, is just beautiful. Squire make a great classic vibe neck, no questions about it. Now the pickups on these guitars are single coil. They look like P90s, but technically they're not, but they are still single coil, so you get that sound. They're very bright. That might or might not be for everybody, but good quality guitar, one volume control, one tone control, and a three-way toggle switch. And where it gets interesting is all of these little dials and controls here. This just allows you to shape the tone in different ways by rolling these back and forwards. Yeah, great quality guitar. Again, in almost brand new condition. This is insane. Very nice. All right, one of my favorite amps of all time is sitting on the ground here. This is a PV Band at 112. I must have encouraged so many people over the years to get one of these. I've owned three of them. I keep buying them, selling them, and buying them back because they're so good. This is a solid state amp, but it's every bit as good as most valve amps. They're loud, they've got a lot of clean headroom. You can also turn the power down on the back so you don't you know, peel the paint off the walls if you're playing at home or at a gig. They're really, really functional. Three of my friends have this exact model. So great sounding amplifiers and they're just loaded with tone. You can get clean, dirty, high gain, everything just by using the front panel. I think you can get them with a foot switch as well, but great to see a PV band at one of my all time favorites. So there's a few amplifiers here that I've owned and played. One of them put my channel, well, maybe on the map many years ago on YouTube. And that's this, we have a Fender Mustang 3. I had a big series called Mustang Monday that had something like 600,000 downloads of my patches globally, which was crazy. These amps are still one of the best when it comes to emulating other amps and it has a great feel about it. Something that a lot of digital amps don't do very well is emulate the feel. And when you dig in, it responds. These are almost indistinguishable from a lot of valve amps. I think this is the original one. I had the version two, but Either way, it's great to see a Mustang 3. These are so loud as well. They've got so much volume, very similar to a PV Bandit volume wise. So if you're looking for something loud and light, or if you just want to use it at home, these are great. It's great to see a Mustang all these years later. I should probably should have kept mine. <laughs> all right, over here, we have some of the more high-end electric guitars and a beautiful bass here as well. But we have a PRS McCarty up here. My good friend, Dr. Rick had one of these great sounding LP style electric, it's got that single cut or SC.
Here's an amplifier you don't see every day. This is the Rampart from Fender. I actually owned the Excelsior that came out at exactly the same time as this amplifier. This is probably about 10 years old. It's still got the tag on it and it is used, which is pretty cool. These are nine watt amps with a 12 inch speaker. And they have two 12 AX7 preamp tubes in it as well. So you're gonna get a tube amp that really only has a volume control on the top. You get two inputs, so one hotter than the other. You just crank it up and get that great dirty blues tone. But you, that's all it does. But if that's what you're looking for, these are a whole lot of fun. They're nice and small as well, which is pretty wild. Here we have the new XBT Lite. I reviewed one of these a couple of years back on the channel and it's awesome. This is one of my favorite low cost practice amplifiers because it sounds great. And if you mic it up with a good microphone, you can get really usable recordings out of this. If you missed my review, I'll link it up in the cards because the tones of this really surprised me. They do now make a larger one than this, but I think if you're gonna be in the market for a small amp, keep it small. I reckon this outperforms a lot of other practice amps that I've had a chance to play. We also have a really nice Gibson over here. This is a custom shop Les Paul Jr. So loaded with one P90 pickup. It's got that really nice sort of faded finish as well, which is always good. Here we have the PV Valve King 212 guitar amplifier. This is a full valve amp from PV. It's great to see one in such great condition. I don't see too many of these around, but I did have a chance to play the single 12 inch version of this live one time, and it was pretty cool. It's got a different sound to their classic range of amplifiers, has a much darker sort of thicker tone. So these are worth checking out if you're in the market for something different, give them a shot. The bass section here also has plenty of different instruments, including some from SX. I've owned a few SX guitars over the years and they're really good quality, very similar to that of something like a Squire. We've got a Stingray, I saw one up here, it's right here. It's pretty nice from Sterling. We have another Ibanez here as well and a really nice looking Squire P bass which uh, has the gold hardware on it as well. Pretty cool, but yeah, plenty of different bass guitars. So if you're a bass player, plenty to choose from. So we got heaps of effects here as well from TC Electronic, Behringer, Boss, pretty much all of them, including the Wazacraft ones. We've got effects from Donna down here as well. I actually own this one. This is really great. MXR, just about everything. Oh, we've even got um, the old visual sound pedals from back in the day down here as well. This is the benefit of a shop like this. You're finding stuff you won't be able to find in like a shop that only sells new gear. And the Wampler drives, there's two of them. These are one of my favorite effects that I reviewed many years ago on the channel, emulating Brad Paisley's tones. So yeah, if you're a fan of Brad and you play a tally, play a clean channel amp, you can get his tones by using those. We've got the little green wonder overdrive over here as well. I've tried so many of these effects. And over here we have more of the loop stations and larger effects from Boss. Here we have the Dunlop TS1 Tremolo FX pedal. I actually purchased one of these off a friend of mine. These are awesome and they're really highly sought after because what they don't do is drop your volume when the tremolo does its waveform. These are great and they also allow you to go out to stereo. So if you're running a stereo rig, these will do it. They're very hard to find. They've since reduced the size of them and I don't think the new ones are as quite as good as these. So yeah, great sounding tremolo effect. Throughout here, we have all of our acoustic guitar section, runs all the way down the middle of this aisle. How cool is this? We have a Fender Sonoran left-handed acoustic guitar. I haven't seen one of these anywhere I've traveled. I guess one of the cool things about this, if you're an electric guitar player like I am, you love the fact you get a very stratty looking and feeling neck, which is pretty cool. This is nice and lightweight. It does have a preamp system on the top here. So if you want to run it out into a PA system, you can do that. It's great to see a guitar in a lefty that I've not seen in person. So very nice. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. A massive thank you to David and Melinda for letting us do this walkthrough at Music Go Around here in Bradenton in Florida. And a big thanks to Rhiannon being behind the camera yet again for this particular series. This shop is awesome and it's run by really lovely folks. David and Melinda are both very welcoming and they've just got a great collection of stuff in here. These are the kind of shops I really dig. They buy, swap, trade, all that kind of stuff. 
and they've just got so many great guitars. But even if you're in the market for drums or bass guitar or anything else, they've got plenty for everybody. So if you're a guitarist and you're in the city of Bradenton, come down and check out this shop. This has been one of the highlights for me so far, just full of really great gear. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. I appreciate that. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> See you soon.